The Vercel AI SDK is the TypeScript toolkit for building AI applications. In this video, we're going to build a few applications to understand how it works. We're going to start by building a few terminal programs to understand AI SDK core. Then we're going to build a chatbot with AI SDK UI. And then we're going to go beyond text, streaming React components from the server to the client with AI SDK RSC. Let's get started. To start, we're going to create a TypeScript file and we're going to define a main function. Within that main function, we're going to call generate text. To use generate text and any AI SDK function, we're first going to have to provide a model. Let's import the OpenAI provider and then specify the exact model we want to use. In this case, GPT-40. Now, AI SDK core has been designed to make changing models as easy as changing two lines of code. So let's see how we can change from GPT-40 to Gemini Pro. We first import the Google provider, and then we specify the model we want to use. Let's go back to GPT-40 for this example. Now we need to specify our prompt. We're going to ask GPT to tell us a joke. Finally, we need to log out the text generation to the console. Let's run the script in the terminal and see what happens. And the models responded, sure, here's a lighthearted joke for you. Why don't skeletons fight each other? They don't have the guts. That's pretty good. But did you notice there was a bit of a delay between when we ran the script and when the model returned a response? We can solve this with streaming. Streaming allows us to send the model's response incrementally as it's being generated. Let's update our example to use streaming. So all we need to do is change the generate text function to the stream text function. And then we need to handle the streaming result. We're going to use an asynchronous for loop to iterate over the resulting text stream and then log it out to the console. So if we run this now in the terminal, let's see what happens. And just like that, our joke is streamed like ChatGPT, typewriter style. How cool. We now know how to generate and stream text with a large language model. But notice that the model's response doesn't contain just a joke. Wouldn't it be nice if we could return our joke in a structured format? Well, with the help of Zod, a schema validation library, we can do just that. We're going to go back to generating rather than streaming. We've got our generate text example. To force the model to return a structured object, we're first going to change generate text to generate object. And then we're going to import Zod and then define a Zod schema for our joke. Our joke is going to have two keys, setup, which is a string, and punchline, which is also a string. We can also optionally describe each of our keys to ensure the model has the appropriate context to give us a great generation. And then finally, we log out the resulting object to the console. Let's run this script and see what happens. So now we have our joke, but in a structured format. Let's see how it did. Setup, why don't scientists trust atoms? Punchline, because they make up everything. Again, not too bad. Just like in our generate text example, you may have noticed that there was a bit of a delay between when we ran the script and when the model returned a response. Well, we can again fix that using streaming. Let's update our example to use stream object. First, we're going to change the function from generate object to stream object. And then to handle the streaming response, we're going to use an asynchronous for loop to iterate over the partial object stream and return the partial object to the console. Let's run this in the terminal and see what happens. Awesome. Our structured joke is now streamed directly to the console. As you can see, AI SDK core makes it simple to call any large language model. But while LLMs are powerful, they're also known for hallucinating, that is, making stuff up. We can solve this and allow the model to interact with the outside world using tools. Tools are like programs that you can provide the model and the model can decide as and when to use them. Let's expand our joke example to allow the model to get the user's location and weather and then incorporate that into a new joke. Let's do it. So we're gonna start with a simple generate text example, except this time we're passing in dynamic information to the prompt using template strings. In this case, passing in the user's location using a local variable. Now let's define a tools object and create our first tool. In this case, it's gonna be called weather. First, we need to pass a tool a description. This is super important because this is what the model is gonna to use to decide whether or not to use the tool. Next, we're gonna provide a Zod schema for the parameters necessary to run the tool. Finally, we'll define an asynchronous function that will be run if the model decides to use the tool. You can run any asynchronous code here. For example, 
calling an external API to get the weather for the user's location. But in this case, we're just gonna compute a random number and return it as the temperature. Now, we can check if the model decided to use the tool, and if so, pass the result to another large language model call to generate our joke. We're gonna want this joke to be streamed to the user, so we're gonna import and call stream text. And just like before, we're gonna to have to pass in a model and a prompt, in this case, GPT-40, and our prompt is now going to incorporate both the user's location as well as the result from the tool call getting the user weather. Finally, to handle the streaming response, we're gonna use an asynchronous for loop, iterating over the text stream and then writing it out to the console. Let's run this in the terminal and see what happens. Sure, here's a joke for you. Why did the Londoner bring a fan to the Thames? Because with the temperature at 27 degrees, even the river needed a cool breeze. <laughs> Not GPT's best joke, but how cool. We gave the model access to the external world. Great, now we've covered the fundamentals behind AI SDK Core, a unified API for calling any large language model. Let's see how we can now use another AI SDK library, AI SDK UI, to build a simple chatbot. We're gonna use Next.js and the app router. Let's get to it. First, let's create a route handler. This is where we're gonna call the model from. We'll start by defining a post request. This function is asynchronous. Next, we're gonna pull in the messages from the request body. Next, we're gonna import and call stream text. We're gonna pass in a model, in this case, OpenAI's GPT-40, and the messages from the body. Finally, we're gonna return the streaming response using the two AI stream response on the result. Great, now let's create our page. First, we're gonna add the use client directive because we're gonna be using hooks and interactivity on this page. Next, we're gonna import the use chat hook from AI slash react. We're gonna destructure messages and iterate over them in the UI. And then we're gonna destructure input, handle input change and handle submit, which will manage everything we need to interact with our API route. And that's it, that's all we need. Let's run the dev server, head to the browser and see what we got. First, we'll say hello, and then we'll ask for a joke. Awesome, in just 40 lines of code, we built a chatbot just like ChatGPT. This is the power of AI SDK UI, which provides framework agnostic hooks for quickly building chat and completion interfaces. But what if we wanted to go beyond text? Well. With Next.js 14 and the AI SDK RSC library, we can stream React components directly from the server. Let's build an application that incorporates everything that we've learned so far. It should be a chatbot with streaming, access to a tool, and as an added bonus, thanks to the AI SDK RSC library, it should be able to stream React server components. Let's dive in. Because this application is a little bit more complex, we're gonna cover everything at a higher level. Let's start with actions.tsx. Unlike our previous example, we're gonna be using server actions instead of route handlers. If you haven't come across server actions before, don't worry. They're just server side functions that you can call directly from the client. Let's dive in. This action is called continue conversation and it takes in an input, which is the user's message, and it returns a client message. Every client message has an ID, a role, and then finally it displays a React component. First, because this is a server action, we're gonna use the use server directive to ensure this only runs on the server. Next, we're gonna pull in the history with the get mutable AI state function from AI RSC. Now to where the magic happens, the stream UI function. First, just like every other AI SDK core function, we need to first pass a model. In this case, we're gonna use OpenAI's GPT-40. Next, we're gonna pass our message history appending the most recent message. Now comes the important part, the text function. This is important because this is the default response callback if the model decides not to use any of the tools it has available to it. We'll be defining ours shortly. This function must return a React component. So what are we doing here? First, the model exposes content, which is the content of the model's response, and done, which is a Boolean telling us if the model's response is done. So first, we check if the model's response is done, and if so, we append the assistance message, the model's response, to the history. Finally, we return the model's response in a plain div. Now, let's define a tool. Remember, we wanted to define a tool that would incorporate the user's location into a new joke. The first two parts of this tool should look familiar. We first define a description. Remember, this is super important because this is what the model uses to decide whether or not to use the tool. 
And then we pass a Zod schema that describes the parameters necessary for the tool to run. But now, unlike our previous tool example, we don't pass an execute function, we pass a generate function. This function, like the text function, needs to return a React component. Importantly, we can perform any asynchronous code that we want here. So what are we doing here? First, we yield a loading component. This is sent back to the client before we perform any of the asynchronous code. So it's nice to provide the user with some feedback of what's going on. Next, because we wanna generate a joke and return a component that displays that joke, we're gonna want a structured object. We're gonna use the generate object function to do so. We're first gonna pass in a model, GPT-40, and then a schema. Our schema is defined in another file, but it's identical to the previous joke schemas that we used before. As you can see, it's got a setup and a punchline, both strings and both described in line. After we define our schema, we need to pass a prompt. In this case, our prompt asks the model to generate a joke that incorporates the user's location. Finally, we pass that resulting joke object to a joke component. This, like the joke schema, is defined in another file. This is a simple client component that takes in our structured joke, shows the setup, and then with a simple click of a button, shows the punchline. Wow, that was a lot, but we're almost there. Now, onto the front end. First, we're gonna use the use client directive because we're gonna be using interactivity and hooks. We're using the use UI state hook from AI RSC to manage the conversation history, and then we're using the use actions hook to pull in our action that we defined in the previous step. Now, we first render the conversation on the page. We'll then create a form that on submit, we'll update the conversation state and then call our action, passing in the message as an input. Finally, we have the input and the submit button. And that's it. Let's run the dev server, head to the browser and see what we got. First, we'll say hello. Then we'll ask for a joke that incorporates London. We'll see our loading state and then our joke. Why did the Big Ben break up with the London Bridge? Because he couldn't stand her constant late night notifications about the time difference in London? It's a pretty bad joke, GPT. But how cool, we just streamed a React component from the server to the client. And that's the Vercel AI SDK. We learned how to call any large language model with AI SDK core. We learned how to quickly build a chatbot interface with AI SDK UI. And then we learned how to go beyond text, streaming React components directly from the server to the client with AI SDK RSC. With our most recent release, 3.1, we've also launched brand new docs that you can find at sdk.vercel.ai slash docs. We're really excited about this release and feel we're one step closer to becoming the complete TypeScript framework for building AI applications. We can't wait to see what you build. And if you have any questions, reach out to us on X or open an issue on GitHub. Thanks so much.